some quite interesting things for you today. Uh, I'll start out with a scope. Uh, it doesn't look like much. I bought this um, very inexpensive scope to buy. And it, you can see that it's a uh, it's marked Hubertus 4 power. And I'm bringing it to your attention in case you come across one of these. And something about the name reminded me of Schmidt and Bender. And um, my, my recollection was good. Uh, Schmidt and Bender made this brand before they became Schmidt and Bender. Now, you may not be interested in four power scopes, maybe not enough magnification but for me it's sufficient and the clarity of this scope uh, is remarkable you'd have to spend 800 or 900 dollars uh, we're filming in the you know it's dark now but I was checking in the twilight um, which is the best time to check a scope and this scope is very very bright and I you know I think Schmidt and Bender uh, knows how to either make or source glass and then use the right coatings. So if you come across something named Hubertus, I mean, you could easily mistake that for uh, Tasco or not, not literally, but that kind of brand. And there are so many brands of scopes now, uh, but this one, I don't even think it says made in Germany, but it is made in Germany. Uh, fantastic glass, a wonderful scope, or maybe it's made somewhere else, but wherever it's made, it's, it's excellent. So that was one thing. Uh, then what else did I want to show you? I've got these, uh, I've got a drilling and I've got a combination gun. Uh, but I wanted to show you, you know, somebody gave this to me and I try to go through books. Um, uh, and, and I have a lot that, that, that I want to show you. Uh, not, not just, this is a, actually a catalog from uh, uh, Rock Island Armory, right? They have an auction. This is an old one. I looked at the date, 2016, but you can see it's quite a substantial catalog. And it's the collection of Robert M. Lee. This is part two, you can imagine. So if you think I have a lot of guns. Um, and then Robert the Bear Bretherton, part three. And, you know, I've looked at this in any number of times and the... the the things, the guns that they were able to accumulate. I mean, going way back, <clears throat> it's it's really not fair to show you these kinds of images because they they probably don't represent well on video. But that's that's really old stuff. Um, but there's there's every kind of Winchester in here. Um, Colts single action armies pages and pages of model 94s every kind of special order gun and i guess obviously these are all auctioned off and in new collections anyway remarkable um remarkable that they were able to find these firearms i mean yes they had a lifetime of collecting to do it but nevertheless it's still uh it's it's not easy today um, I have a very modest collection, and I'll, I'll just, uh, before I get into the main subject, uh, which is these drillings and so on, um, I remember visiting a fellow, probably shouldn't say where, and um, I walked into his gun room, which had the typical, you know, vault kind of doors, and he had every conceivable variation of Winchester, um, just phenomenal I remember I said to him, he said, did you, Mike, did you pick up any good Winchesters? And I said, no, I think you've got them all. Just amazing. Uh, what does that all mean? I'm not sure, but a fantastic thing uh, to be able to study them and own them and, you know, at your leisure, look at them, uh, which applies to these guns. So maybe we'll get into the main subject. So I'll start with this Franz Sodia drilling, sorry, combination gun. The, this one has to be the most delicate uh, combination gun that I've seen, uh, beautifully engraved. Franz Sodia is one of those substantial names in Ferlach, uh, that's spelled F-E-R-L-A-C-H. And if you ever come into some money or win a lottery or what have you, 
uh, Furlach is the place to visit. The guns they can make there uh, are just remarkable. And you, you know, you you may have heard of Franz Sodia, uh, Ludwig Borovnik. I, I should probably put a link to all of the different um, make gun makers down there. And they can build things that I guess can be built somewhere else, but nobody else really does build them. And you can see the it's a Kallus, very small scope and two and a half power. And whoever ordered this, I'm convinced, uh, wanted to have a combination gun. The, I mean, the, the engraved images are roadier on my side, and I'm not sure what's on your side. Um, oh, these are those are our Hans. That's a, that's a kind of a great big grouse. Um, we don't get them on this side of the. Atlantic, but um, you can look that up actually. Uh, that's, that's a great type of hunting. And this is very unique because it's in um, 6.5 by 57 R. And I think when I first looked at it, I made a video some time ago, and I think it was sold to me as a 6.5 Zauer or something like that, a very unique, very unusual sort of uh, very heavily tapered bottleneck cartridge. So I was very happy I made a chamber casting. Uh, didn't do the best job, but it still came out nicely. And it turned out that it's a 6.5 by 57, which is this round here. That's the 6.5 by 57. And then the really unique thing is that the bottom barrel is 24 gauge. And I'm almost certain that not too many people know the 24 gauge, but since we're on these gauges, you know, I have a lot of people writing me and uh, maybe a good idea to look at all the gauges. So that's 410 bore. So the bore actually measures 410. That's 28 gauge, 24 gauge, um, 20. This one's very familiar, I'm sure. I don't have 16, but it would fit in here. Um, this is 12. This is a shorty 12. These are becoming very popular. This is a shot shell, but they make them with slugs that are just um, one of the most fun things to shoot. And this is a big 10 gauge. I think it's a three and a half inch. Uh, they also made them in, in two and seven eighths. Anyhow, this is this this uh, combination gun is in 24 gauge. There's also a 32 gauge and um, some others, I might have them around, but anyway, 6.5 by 57. So, I mean, it's not exactly a Creedmoor, but it's the same bullets, 6.5. And I was relieved that it wasn't that very unusual. One could almost say weird, sour round. Uh, you can see the ammo's available, 6.5 by 57 R. R just obviously means rimmed. So I took it up in the mountains and we um, we hit some really heavy weather. And if you keep an eye on the main channel, uh, hopefully um, we'll have some videos up. It was, it was raining, it was snowing, it was sleeting and it was hailing and the, the wind was phenomenal up there. Uh, but I like that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, this combination gun, it took me a while to sight it in, uh, mainly because I had no I had no way to accomplish a rest and um, the wind was pushing so hard. Uh, anyway, very quickly at 25 yards, you can tell what's what. So th this is one of those reticles. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the old reticles, the reticle actually moved in, 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 in terms of its relationship to the center of the glass. So, so sometimes when you pick up a vintage uh, combination gun or even bolt action, you'll think that something something's wrong with the reticle because it's parked way over in the bottom left corner or top right corner. That's because the reticle physically moved. It was not permanently centered. That technology came later. This is one of those scopes. Fortunately, uh, Fransodia or whoever the, the craftsmen were did a good job and it was very low which I expected either very low or very high. Uh, normally the windage is usually on, on these kinds of guns. Um, and uh, with some work, this is the elevation that normally there's a windage, 
you just undo this screw and then you can turn this dial and you can watch the reticle move up and down um, as, as you're turning it. But I mean, it was a howling wind and uh, there is usually an adjustment for when did you can actually move these bases around. But I didn't, I didn't have a brass punch or anything up there. I didn't want to get involved in that. The focus is right here. Um, this is, it's just a sliding mechanism to adjust the focus and to take off. Um, very simple. There couldn't be a more uh, delicate uh, scope than this tiny callus. I've actually never seen one this small. And um, anyway, I tried it with the uh, iron sights and as usual, dead on, no mistakes. And I'll show you the breech. And you can see, I think I did this before, but I'm not sure. 24 gauge, it just fits very nicely. I mean, it could have been a 28 gauge as well. I'm not sure why they picked 24. Maybe it was, you know, very popular in that area at that time. Um, but, and it, it's, it's, you know, it's got the greener cross bolt, or maybe some people call it a Kirsten cross bolt. I lost track over the years. Uh, front trigger fires the rifle, and it's a set trigger on top of it, so you can push that forward. And um, it's an automatic safety, um, and of course the rear trigger. And I, some people say you're breaking the firing pins, and I've said this on too many videos, but so far I have, I don't, I, I must be blessed. I just don't get broken firing pins, not so far. Uh, maybe I'll get many in a row. Anyhow, yeah, and I was lucky the bores were perfect. I suspect because nobody knew what it was chambered for. 6.5 something, that's all it says. And so nobody did a casting. Um, were there any glitches? Uh, yes, there was one. The rim of the modern 24 gauge uh, is slightly smaller than the rim of the original 24 gauge. So when you have that kind of thing happen, you have to load the shells differently. You can't drop them in. They'll pass the extractor. So you have to actually rest them on the extractor and close carefully. If it doesn't make sense, we tried to do it on film. Uh, it's actually very simple. And everything else about the about this combination gun is perfect. So we, you know, obviously just cocked it then to set the front. That's the rifle barrel. So you, you just touch that and it fires and um, safe off. And this will be the rifle barrel without the set trigger because I released the set trigger with the safety on. So that's the rifle barrel. So that's the story on the combination gun. I mean, I know people that collect only these and these are a complete steal. If you ordered something like this, there's an hour, hour hand or we're on hour hand on the, on the bottom of the action. I don't know, you know, 12, 15, 30, I have no idea, thousand dollars. And these are changing hands that just, <laughs> these are some of the best buys. I would say the best buys. People don't know what they are. You know, time passes and uh, things get overlooked and then they usually get discovered and usually it's a wave of discovery, um, which would be warranted in this case. Uh, then I'll move on to this one. Uh, I didn't, I, I haven't owned this for long. Um, I, it's, it's got a long name, Stieg, Stieglander or Stiegler. I can, I can write it out for you. Uh, quite, I, Again, it has a nice scope, and the claw mounting on this one is particularly slick. Um, it just, you know, after all these years, I'm sure this is pre-war. And I like the um, absence of the pistol grip. That's good. I have a hunch that this is a set trigger. No, uh, no, I'm wrong. Not a set trigger. Oh, this is unique. Here, I'll take off that scope again. To, you can select the rifle barrel here. You just move this over. And then I'm presuming the hammer now makes contact uh, with the firing pin for the, for the rifle. Um, you know, kind of like the Savage combination gun where you have a, the, uh, the old model, where you have a button here to move um, what the hammer affects. It's still got some case colors left. And um, again, it has, the cross bolt at the top. Most of the time, um, the break open guns that have the cross bolt, well, I've never encountered one 
that's shaky. They just that seems to perfect the lock, and it they just don't they don't come undone. Uh, anyway, twelve gauge, and then um, maybe we'll you know do some shooting with this one or something. Um, uh, yeah, <clears throat> it's 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 really an incredible. Um, firearm to own or oh, yeah you have to flip up the rear sight this was a mystery to me a lot of these drillings when you move this lever over there's a rod that goes through here and through the rib and pushes the rear sight up um this one doesn't seem to either have that or it's not working uh, but on this one anyway you have to raise the front the uh rear sight um, and on the other ones that are that do it on their own uh, you the mechanism raises the sight but you have to push it down um, so anyway I don't know the details on that uh, both that one and this one have mint bores I try not to buy them when they're looking like stove pipes although I've done that too and you can clean them up um, anyhow excellent piece and we'll look at it some more but I should probably show you what does it shoot. So this one, uh, well, no mysteries on the gauge. So it's a 12 gauge here. And then um, uh, what have we got here? So this is what, this is the 5.6 by 52 R. And I, this is, um, this is the 22 Savage high power. And then this is the 2535 Winchester, which is known in Europe as the 6.5 by 52R and then I put a 3030 for comparison and um, actually just before filming I learned that the rim of the European designation the 6 point the, sorry the 5.6 is a little bit smaller but it should all be the same roughly because they're all just I mean they're just neck down um, cartridges based on the same parent case Anyhow, uh, very mild shooting and very effective. When this cartridge came out, when the 22 Savage High Power came out, uh, they were using it on all kinds of things like tigers and, I mean, inappropriate use. Uh, but they were, you know, dazzled by the velocity and it, it's a 70 grain 22 bullet and you can see some, you know, spectacular things when you play around with higher velocity. Um, and, and that's still going on uh, today. But at that time, it was, you know, even bigger because modern velocities were just being discovered. I should probably stop at that just because it's uh, maybe enough talking. Uh, we'll try to get these out. Uh, this one um, I did have in the mountains, and and uh, it turned out to be a, a great performer. Once I figured out how to deal with that rim, because at first the shell was passing the rim, and getting stuck, but uh, much like loading a, a rimmed cartridge in a magazine, so long as you get the rim in front of the extractor, it, it works out okay. Or in the case of a rim magazine, every shell has to be in, in front of the other rim, if you can follow what I'm saying. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you find these guns interesting. I'm probably gonna order the latest catalog from Rock Island. I mean, these folks um, see some pretty amazing guns. I told you about Scotland and the Glen Eagles auction, uh, but maybe this is probably, well, there's definitely more here. Anyway, uh, I usually talk too much. Thank you very much for joining me as always. And we'll see you on the next video. And um, yeah, stay tuned. We've got a whole bunch of really interesting guns that just sort of showed up. And um, these are two of them. All right, take care until we see you again.